Good morning. Welcome to worship, and thanks for joining us on this Palm Sunday. Welcome to Holy Week. And if you don't have a palm strip yet, if you're just sitting down to participate on, in this and it's Sunday morning, uh, we have some palm strips available for you outside our West Entry, and you're welcome to stop by today and pick one up uh, to be a part of your worship experience. This uh, Thursday, our Monday Thursday service, we have a unique experience. Uh, we're doing our Monday Thursday service on Zoom together, and there will be some recorded elements, but much of it will be live, uh, including really kind of the centerpiece of that service will be communion. And so we're inviting you to gather some bread and wine or grape juice together in advance, and we will take part in the meal together virtually in unison. So we're looking forward to that. You can get a link for that either through our e-news or through our website. Our Good Friday service can be viewed through our normal channels, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and our website. And then Easter Sunday services are our usual times, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. for traditional and contemporary. Gather family and friends uh, together in person or remotely and watch together and share in the joy of the resurrection and new life that we will be celebrating on Easter Sunday. This Saturday, April 3rd, our family ministry is coordinating a drive-through Easter I spy and egg hunt between 3 and 5 p.m. Easter eggs and other Easter objects will be hidden around the All Saints grounds. Um, you'll be entering the west, through the west lot and there will be a kind of path that you'll be taken through to find some of these hidden eggs and other items. Uh, volunteers will be handing out some goodie bags, masked and gloved. Um, and so see our e-news for all of the details on that event and to involve your family or your neighbors. God goes with us on our journey this Holy Week. May this be a time of prayer and expectation for you. And um, if you already picked up a palm strip from church, you are welcome to wave it during our opening hymn. Sweet home. 
Today's reading is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed, blessed is the one coming in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading. Well, this is Palm Sunday, and it's a day of celebration in the history of the church. And I just want to acknowledge for a moment what we celebrate in other areas of life. You know, we celebrate the little things. We've been reminded to do that this last year when so many of our larger plans had to be altered or changed. It's good to celebrate the small delights and blessings like a simple home-cooked meal, especially when maybe the whole family is involved. Time with a family member or friend, whether it's in person or on a screen. Walks or time spent outside, maybe on a lunch break that you might not have had if you were at an office every day. It's good for us to be aware of some of these things we might overlook when we're too busy and just be thankful for them. There are bigger milestones, everything from maybe earning a degree, a new job, and even completing a big home project that call for a fuller celebration. And then there are the truly transformational achievements and milestones that we just have poured our heart and spirit and sweat into. You know, I think of those old images of people in Times Square celebrating the end of World War II. Across the spectrum, there have been moments in our history when people have celebrated political victories or achievements. The pandemic will probably end in a more gradual way, but I think all of us will either be quietly or collectively celebrating the end of that. Palm Sunday was a long-awaited celebration. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, Mark says, many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. The cloaks and branches the crowd laid down were fitting for the arrival of a king and recalled the arrival of historic leaders in Israel's past. It was the red carpet treatment. People were shouting, Hosanna! It's a word from Hebrew that doesn't have a great English translation. On one hand, it's closely associated with celebration, but it's also derived from the word to save, and it loosely translates, save now. The crowds are excitedly cheering on Jesus, save now, and they haven't reached their hopeful vision yet, but they're filled with expectation about what he's going to be bringing. 
Many in that crowd were excited to see Jesus coming to Jerusalem for a specific reason. They believed and hoped that he would be a king that would take the reins of political and military power, push Rome out, and by some miraculous turn of events, restore Israel to independence. Seeking God's help to bring an end to Roman rule is understandable. Roman rulers were brutal. The prophet Zechariah wrote centuries before, Behold, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. He's humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The colt Jesus is riding reflects that old prophecy. The typical image of a conquering king was, as you might imagine, to ride in on a big war horse. But even Zechariah's ancient prophecy sets the stage for a different kind of king, one that comes riding in on the colt of a donkey. I mean, if you think about it, young donkeys aren't very imposing. It's a more humble image. The people who paraded down the Mount of Olives and into Jerusalem with Jesus fully expected and hoped for some critical changes in their country. But those specific hopes wouldn't unfold in the way that they wanted. And in fact, their celebration would come to an end quickly in the days ahead. Our celebrations reflect where we've placed our hearts and our hopes. Again, it might be interesting to reflect on what you look forward to and celebrate. There aren't necessarily right and wrong objects of celebration, but we might learn something about where we place our hope and our heart. And then we could ask some questions about that. Does that reflect who I am and where I want to be devoting my energies and my passion? You know, are there different or larger reasons for gratitude that I may not spend as much time celebrating? Do you take time to celebrate the people in your life? Do you celebrate the good things happening in your community? You know, every month, our church council takes time at the start to celebrate good things happening in our congregation. It's an excellent practice. You could look back on the crowds that celebrated Jesus on Palm Sunday and see that some of their expectations weren't quite on target as far as who Jesus would be. But they had the right instinct and the right heart. They knew Jesus was a transformational figure. They just didn't understand the complexity of that. They really couldn't fully at that point. Even Jesus' closest disciples needed time to digest just what he meant after he died. Jesus was a king, just a different kind of king, the kind that redeems the hang-ups that we have about kings in the first place. And part of that new understanding meant that Jesus wasn't going to be the imperial presence taking Jerusalem by force, it meant that he would open up his own heart in compassion to create a new path and possibilities for all people. In doing so, he would become vulnerable as someone who puts their heart out on the line often does. This is the story of Holy Week, the passion story that lies ahead in the coming days. You know, throughout his ministry and leading to this point, Jesus was entering into the pain and isolation and hopelessness of those who had been pushed to the margins of community. He was forgiving those who thought they were unforgivable. He was welcoming those who were outcasts, putting aside the letter of laws to embrace the spirit of those laws, which was a deeper and truer love for God and our neighbor. But all of this was controversial and dangerous. It was not accepted by those who felt comfortable with things as they were. And it would lead Jesus into his own experience of pain and time of trial. Jesus is the Messiah and spiritual leader who makes himself vulnerable in order to save us. Like a firefighter who enters into a burning house. Like a counselor who enters into the pain of another in order to help them find their way out the celebration of Palm Sunday would fall away as the events of Monday, Thursday unfolded as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his arrest and betrayal. What we celebrate reflects our heart. But in the same way, what we're willing to endure and undergo reveals that even more. 
Much of the crowd that joined the celebration on Palm Sunday was not there for the events that would follow. It was too much for them. Graham Greene was a British author who wrote many novels that reflected on faith. In the late 1950s, he decided to speak with an Italian monk and mystic named Father Pio. He found out that seeing him was more involved than he realized. He had to wait two and a half years for a 15-minute appointment to see him at his Italian monastery. Father Pio, or Padre Pio, was regarded by some as a living saint. On the day Green was due to meet with him, Green first attended a service that he officiated at. Their appointment was supposed to begin immediately afterward. But instead, Green, after the service, left the church and went straight for the airport and flew back to London without ever meeting him. When someone asked him why he broke the appointment he had waited two and a half years for, Green said, I was not ready for the manner in which that man could change my life. At the start of this historic week, you're invited to truly celebrate those things that matter. And in doing that, discover what you are also willing to undergo in order to maintain those same deeply held values and hopes. Achievements don't always come completely and immediately. It can take longer than we expected. The path we find ourselves on can be far more winding and difficult. But I invite you to remember that Jesus came to go with you, to walk with you, no matter who you are or where you are from, in your own times of frailty or exhaustion, failure or hardship. Jesus entered into our world so that you would not be alone. In our moment, when we recognize God's goodness and selflessness for each one of us, may we be able to quietly utter or joyfully shout, Hosanna. Amen.
Let's pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant, Lord. Give your faithful humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting new life. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who feel isolated, in pain, or in need of your compassionate presence. We especially lift up those connected to this faith community on our prayer list, whatever their need today. Cindy Groats and family at the death of her father, Bob. Linda, Tim, Orlin, Marilyn, Joy, Lindsay, Daniel, Claire, Jan, Bev, and Carol. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And we join together in that prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you, and And also with with you. you.
Let's pray. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now receive this blessing. You are what God made you to be, created to be a blessing, chosen as a child of God, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you so that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news.